Give up to Eric. Thank you, Eric. Hello. Welcome to building maintainable command line tools with MRuby. Uh, I'm Eric Kodal, and this talk is about working with MRuby and MRuby CLI. Uh, I'm from Seattle. Uh, I'm a Ruby committer, a Ruby Gems committer, a rig committer, and the author of many gems. Uh, I'm also on vacation from most of my open source work. Um, instead, I've been working on um, shelves like these. Uh, I built the ones on the far side, and uh, this one on this side by me is a work in progress still. Um, I also built some electronics, including this keyboard. Uh, I brought it with me if you want to try it out. Uh, I also work for Fastly, a real-time content delivery network. Uh, this is our website featuring Gordo, one of our amazing dogs at Fastly. Fastly supports many open source projects, including hosting the Ruby Lang website, uh, downloads for Ruby, and all of your Ruby gems. Last, uh, last month, uh, Fastly served 425 terabytes of data and 8 billion requests supporting Ruby gems all for free. And I'd also like to highlight the work of David Radcliffe and the rest of the RubyGems.org team for speeding up gem downloads, especially for users outside of the United States. Um, uh, they'll be making a blog post about that real soon now. And of course, you can follow Fastly on Twitter. I also have stickers. Uh, so in part one, I'll introduce MRuby and MRuby CLI. And I'd like to start with a note on terminology. Uh, I, since I talk about two different implementations of Ruby, uh, I'll say MRuby when I'm referring to the lightweight embeddable implementation of Ruby you can download at mruby.org. And I will say CRuby to refer to the version you can download from rubylang.org. Uh, some people call this MRI for Matt's Ruby interpreter. And I don't want to use MRI because it's too easy to confuse with MRuby, and both are by Matt's. Uh, my exploration of MRuby and MRuby CLI started with a web, uh, web API wrapper. We're building a new product at Fastly with uh, new APIs, and I wanted uh, an easy way to interact with it so that I could demonstrate that the APIs were usable. So why not choose regular CRuby to write this wrapper? Uh, when we use CRuby, we have to install the correct version depending on which language features we want to use. Uh, then you need to install any gems that you depend on. And then you have to keep both Ruby and all of the gems up to date for as long as you're supporting the tool. MRuby is very similar to CRuby, so we can start with a prototype in CRuby, uh, port that prototype to MRuby, and then continue our maintenance in MRuby. So what about MRuby? Is, what is it about MRuby that makes it uh, more suitable than CRuby? Uh, MRuby is a lightweight Ruby implementation. You only need to use as much of the features as you need, which keeps it smaller. Uh, it's also designed for embedding. You can run it on a low resource hardware or embed it in other software without the same hassles you get from trying to embed CRuby. Like CRuby, MRuby has libraries and calls them gems. Uh, MRuby ships with a limited standard library, so you need to, uh, so you need to use a gem in order to get a, an array with all the same features you get from CRuby. Uh, there's also standalone MRuby libraries, some of which are, are C extensions that wrap C libraries like the MRuby curl gem. <laughs> At uh, past Ruby KIDs, there have been many other talks about MRuby. Uh, so if you want to see any other applications, uh, you can find recordings of these talks on the Ruby KID website. Um, I recommend highly the one on the top, making a high-tech seat in MRuby. It's about building a uh, washlet toilet seat using Lego Mindstorms. Uh, it's, a, it's a very great talk. Uh, since MRuby is compi compiled, unlike CRuby, how do you use it? Uh, the first thing you do is edit the build config.rb. Unlike CRuby, where you can use any gem at any time, in MRuby, you must choose in advance. In the build config, you pick which MRB gems you want to use. Uh, you also choose uh, which compiler to use, which MRuby uses for cross-compiling. And you can also specify a library and include paths to use in case you need to link other C libraries. If you're writing an MRuby gem, instead of uh, embedding MRuby, you'll fill out an MRuby gem specification. MRuby CLI uses, our applications also use the MRuby gem specification for specifying uh, the executable name and the test files. The MRuby gem.rake is where this lives. Uh, like a RubyGems gem specification, it contains the gem metadata. 
the dependencies, and the list of binaries. And metadata includes the name, the version, the license, and test files, and so on. Uh, you also specify any gems you depend on uh, and which binaries the gem will create. After you uh, have these files configured, uh, you run rake to build mruby and all the executables that you specify. When rake is complete, you'll see several executables in the bin directory. Uh, when you're using mruby CLI, you'll see the name you specified in the mruby gem specification. You'll also have mruby and mirb uh, with all the gem dependencies uh, compiled in. You can use these to uh, test out any small changes you might have made if you don't want to run a test. And uh, you'll also have an MRB test if you've enabled testing for uh, running the tests. The goal of MRuby CLI is to allow Rubyists to build single file executables in a familiar environment. Last year, Terence Lee and Zachary Scott gave a talk uh, about MRuby CLI that showed the basics of the tool and how it worked. And the very basic description of MRuby CLI is that you can write Ruby and release software for Linux and OS X and Windows. Typical development loop of MRuby CLI is to start by writing some MRuby, uh, compile the code that you've written, then if your tests that uh, run your tests go back to the start if they don't pass. Once you have enough tests passing and features implemented, implemented you can release your executable. When I first heard about MRuby and MRuby CLI, I thought it sounded pretty easy, but I was sure there would be some challenges involved in using a different Ruby implementation. Uh, the first one is that MRuby is not exactly the same as CRuby. The implementation doesn't support everything you can do in CRuby the, same, the ways that I'm familiar with. The first problem I had was the modular standard library. Uh, MRuby's core library has classes like array and hash and string, but they only support a minimum number of methods. To get the full CRuby experience, you need to have uh, an extension gem like MRuby Array EXT. And it's easy to forget uh, to add these gems if you're developing your own MRuby gem, and you forget to add these dependencies so your, your gem won't work if you try to include it in another project. MRuby also has a smaller language outside the standard library. Uh, there are no predefined globals such as load path. Everything is compiled in, um, so none of the, uh, no load path since everything is compiled in or any of the other globals inherited from Perl or shell scripts. Uh, some libraries you might want to port to MRuby may depend on these. Uh, I also had a problem with the here document support when porting a library from CRuby, uh, but I haven't fully reproduced this on its own so, so I can file a bug. And uh, while you can use uh, keyword arguments to call methods, you can't define methods that automatically check keyword arguments, so you have to do this by hand. And uh, some G sub replacements don't work in MRuby. So you may need to do um, change your regular expressions a little bit to get them to work. Uh, backtraces in MRuby seem less useful than in CRuby. Uh, there's an issue where the backtrace sometimes points to the wrong line, so you have to look around to figure out where an error occurred. Uh, it also felt like I did more exploring in the C source to determine why an exception was raised, but I'm unsure if uh, that's due to unfamiliarity with MRuby or due to other reasons. Uh, and there are many pure Ruby libraries already written in CRuby that you'll want to use um, in MRuby to make your life easier. Overall, this is pretty straightforward, but uh, you've got to beware of the restricted syntax. Unfortunately, porting the tests is much harder due to the differences in the way tests are run in MRuby, and I'll cover that a little in the future. Gems for MRuby feel a lot like working with libraries from Ruby 1.6, and I think this is because there haven't been enough people uh, working in MRuby to build up libraries that uh, apply well to many different uh, types of problems. MRuby libraries often have a very narrow focus, so uh, you either have to do some hunting to find a library that fits your use case, or you'll need to submit patches to get a library to work for you. So, and so far I've submitted patches to all of these libraries. Uh, some, some libraries set multiple patches, uh, some for uh, small behavior changes, and some for supporting different platforms. Uh, and the last challenge I'll cover for MRuby is getting build information out of MRuby. Uh, since MRuby is compiled, it needs to uh, include C libraries in order to link successfully. MRuby uh, CLI needs to cross-compile a bunch of C libraries if you're going to use them in your gems, so you need to use the correct cross-compiler. Unfortunately, uh, it's hard to extract what compiler is being used so that you can build those successfully from MRuby's build system without loading all of its 
uh, rake files. And I think improving this uh, will make MRuby's build system more flexible, but I haven't yet tried to see it. Like MRuby CLI, uh, or MRuby CLI, like MRuby was also a new tool for me, so it took some time for me to figure out how to use it the best way. And so here's some of the larger challenges I had with it. Uh, the first was Docker. Uh, the MRuby CLI build system is built atop Docker, and the best part of that of this is that it's um, out of the box, ready to cross compile for Linux, for OS X, and for Windows, without any extra setup. Unfortunately, Docker is kind of clumsy the way MRuby CLI uses it. Typically, uh, Docker is used to run a long-lived uh, service, but MRuby CLI only needs to keep the container running long enough to finish your compile or your test. However, Docker seems to be the best option available since there isn't any extra work you need to do to get started with MRuby CLI. In order to start a build of your command line tool, you run uh, docker compose run compile. And this is just too long to type, even if you're good at your shell history. And when there's a problem with the compile, it's hard to debug from the outside. Uh, you have to start a shell inside Docker, then figure out which commands are being run to reproduce and fix your problem. When you weren't working from a Docker, or when you were working from a Docker shell, you don't have your familiar development environment, and there's no shell history from the last time, so it's harder than usual to get things fixed. And I think the biggest challenge I had was the MRuby CLI build system. And most of these problems come from the way the tasks are organized. The tasks for building your executable and the tasks for building MRuby are mixed together into a single rate command. This makes it hard to add your own tasks and then have them run in the right place. For example, before compiling the MRuby curl uh, extension, you need to have the curl C library installed for every platform, which is difficult by default. Due to these difficulties, I've uh, made some improvements to the build tasks. The first was to build MRuby separately from the other tasks, uh, or from the other work that must be performed inside of Docker. So this way I can cross compile the C libraries at the right time. The other improvement was to have a rake file that exists inside of Docker and start, or outside of Docker that starts Docker for me. This also allows me to perform extra tasks that don't need Docker for run and are easier to debug. So the new system runs rake three times. First, the outer tasks run, um, out, outer tasks run and start Docker, uh, which runs the inner tasks, and then the inner tasks perform any cross compilation and any other setup that can only occur inside of Docker. And then after these are done, they run MRuby's rake tasks to build the command line tool. Uh, the other tasks don't need Docker. I use them to download and unpack MRuby to get it ready to compile. Uh, there's also some global test setup for reasons I'll cover later. And finally, there are release tasks for publishing your finished executable. The inner tasks that run inside of Docker cross compile the C libraries you have configured, then invoke a rake again to compile MRuby or to run the tests. There's some additional benefits to my changes to the build system. Uh, it's now much easier to add hooks for custom tasks since there is a well-defined place for uh, with the different phases of the build. And I also made or make tests faster by only compiling for the host platform uh, when running tests. Uh, there's no need to build for every platform when you can only run the tests for the host platform. It's also likely that you'll need to use a C library as a dependency of an MRuby gem in your product or project. There's two different options for how you can include them in, the, in your command line tool. The first is to statically link the dependency. This depend, embeds the library in your command line tool and leaves you with a single file executable. The advantage is you don't have to write instructions for installing the, the correct C libraries in order to use your tool. Uh, the downside to static linking is you need to uh, re-release your command line tool if the C libraries have any vulnerabilities or bugs. And it also makes your executable larger. The second option for dealing with C libraries is to use dynamic linking. The advantage here is that vulnerability management is easier. The user should be upgrading their, uh, their own libraries for security vulnerabilities, so there's less for you to do. Uh, the disadvantage is that this adds an extra dependency, so you're no longer truly a single file. The final large challenge I had with MRuby CLI was cross-compiling C libraries. MRuby CLI can cross-compile your executables for six different platforms, and this means your C library dependencies also need to be compiled for all of those platforms. For example, for libcurl, uh, you can't just install a libcurl development package inside Docker and be done, since this library won't work on OS X or Windows. Instead, you have to download the source and unpack it, uh, 
cross-compile for each platform you will be releasing on, and then set up MRuby's compiler to find the libraries you've built. To help myself out, I wrote out a small tool to automate cross-compiling dependencies. Uh, you configure the library to cross-compile with a few values. Uh, the first is its name, um, curl for this one. Uh, the release name is used to determine the source directory since libraries don't always have consistent names. You uh, provide the URL where the source is downloaded from, and you can optionally set configure flags. For example, I don't yet have OpenSSL cross-compiling, so I have disabled it for now because uh, for development. Uh, in part two, I'll discuss the origins and structure of the command line tool. So my exploration of MRuby CLI started from a tool for our customer support team so they could uh, use that to configure this new product we're developing. Our service was and still is API only. There's no uh, web UI for everyone to use that does everything you need. Uh, the service has a rather complicated setup, so I wanted to automate common use cases so that the users could avoid errors. And I also wanted a tool that customer support could send to our customers to uh, reduce the burden of supporting this new service. The solution to these problems was to write a tool that would automate and um, set up, uh, validate inputs, and reduce the number of errors the users could encounter. Uh, it would have the benefit of giving design feedback on the API, and we could use that to make further improvements. Before exploring MRuby CLI, I started with some prototypes using CRuby. Uh, the first one was a single file script that primarily served as documentation. The script was very easy for me to write, and uh, the customer support people could modify it for their needs, but it wasn't flexible enough to handle all the, way they, all the ways they interacted with the API. Uh, as the needs of customer support grew, I split the script into multiple scripts. Each script had its own purpose, for example, listing options or performing initial setup or disabling or enabling some feature of the product. This was more flexible, and I made a point of making the scripts uh, well documented so it would be easy to modify for writing future scripts. Finally, I extracted a couple of classes from the scripts for reuse. This included a basic implementation of JSON API, as that is our API transport specification, and um, one for argument parsing using Ruby's option parser, as we have many commands using similar arguments. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, what lessons did I learn from the prototypes? The first was that documentation in the tool was very important. We had not yet budgeted time for API documentation of the service, so documentation by the command line tool was very useful. Roughly half the lines in the scripts were comments. This meant that our support staff could figure out what the tool was doing and suggest changes that would improve their lives. Keeping the scripts simple made everything more understandable. Uh, none of the scripts had external dependencies, so they were easier to install by checking out the repository. Most scripts were small with a single well-defined purpose, and it was okay to have a large script that automates an important action. Ultimately, though, these scripts were hard to maintain. Uh, our development environment uh, installed an old version of Ruby without keyword arguments by default, so we needed to install a modern version separately for them. Also, customer service would add some of their own tools since implementing new tools was easy, but they would have independent versions that were hard for the both of us to maintain. I decided to investigate a switch to MRuby CLI to address the maintenance burden while trying to keep the maintainability high. I decided to model my command line tool off the pattern in RubyGems. Uh, subcommands in my command line tool are implemented as one subclass per subcommand, the same as in RubyGems. Both use option parser to parse arguments. Uh, each has a common setup method that picks which options are uh, valid for the command. And after parsing the arguments, the execute method runs, uh, runs the command and handles any errors. For example, if we have a command that lists conditions, the setup method would require the service and the version conditions uh, that the conditions would be attached to. Then the execute method would perform the API operations to fetch the conditions from the service and display them. I decided to port uh, MRuby optparse from the CRuby standard library for option parsing. I chose this because it was familiar to me in other Rubyists and it has good documentation. Opparse also performs automatic checking and argument completion for you, which means uh, less code to write to check these by hand and is more user friendly. And Opparse even offers uh, shell completion as a standard feature. 
all these would make uh, parsing arguments easy and straightforward. For API requests, after evaluating several other libraries, I chose MRuby curl. Uh, it seems to be the most mature HTTP library. It supports both HTTP, which is uh, used for development, and HTTPS for accessing our production systems. The library supports persistent connections, uh, which is especially important in HTTPS requests. The only downside is the uh, libcrawl dependency, which must be cross-compiled and linked into the tool. For testing, there are two Ruby, MRuby gems that seem to be the most popular. MRuby mTest provides a library for assertions, while the MRuby test gem provides a tool that runs these test cases. While using these gems is easy, setting up test cases can be painful. Testing, testing gave me the most frustration when building the command line tool. It's the most important piece of writing maintainable software, but due to the unfamiliar environment, there were some adjustments I had to make in order to understand uh, testing with MRuby CLI. The MRuby mTest gem is very much like the mini test library that ships with CRuby. Uh, you make a subclass uh, of the test class. Uh, you write test methods, the same as in mini test. Uh, there's a setup and a teardown method you can use for common test uh, setup in the same test case. But you have to remember to uh, start running the tests with mTest unit.new.run at the bottom of your test case since MRuby doesn't have uh, at exit without an extra gem. Since MRuby is compiled, you can't run the test directly. Instead, you have to use uh, MRuby test gem, which provides a test runner. Uh, when the tests run, a new uh, MRuby VM is created for each test file, providing complete isolation. So uh, one test can't talk to another one. Uh, the design of the test runner has some complications to it. The first is that uh, creating a global test helper requires setting the test preload option in your MRuby gem specification. Without this, the, uh, the helper won't be, able, won't be available to any of your tests because MRuby sees it as a separate test file. And I'm still working on integrating this into my project. A uh, second complication was Docker. Uh, since MRuby CLI uses Docker Compose, uh, most, but most of the documentation is written for the Docker command. So it took me some time to figure out how to set up uh, DNS records so that the tests uh, could see the other services for testing on my local machine. I would have preferred to uh, mock all the interactions without, but without an easy test helper, uh, making a request to development services locally was easier. And uh, the final complication was that MRuby CLI was slow to start because it compiled all the platforms before starting any of the tests, and this made the feedback loop for uh, test change very long. To work around the global uh, test setup, I chose to perform uh, the most important test setup before starting any of the tests, and I used the improved build infrastructure to do this um, outside of Docker before starting any of the tests because I have more capable libraries using CRuby. Since uh, some test setup occurs uh, outside Docker, I pass the needed uh, information in via global variables so that the tests then load those out of the environment uh, when it needs them. And finally, to improve test startup speed, I adjusted the rake tasks to only compile for the host platform, uh, which is what the tests use um, when running the test, uh, rake test task. This meant I only had to compile one platform instead of seven. MRuby CLI also supports bin tests, which are like integration tests. Uh, since I prefer strong unit tests, I haven't explored these as much. For an integration test, you run your command and then uh, assert the output it returns. So despite all of these difficulties, why would you still use MRuby CLI? Uh, why not uh, use Go or one of the other tools that have the same capability? So uh, I'm primarily a Rubyist, and I work on a team that are all primarily Rubyists. And while we aren't opposed to learning new things, MRuby keeps us in our comfort zone. For example, when I have problems with the test setup, I could use CRuby that was um, much more that I was much more comfortable with to get the job done. And remember that I also want a tool that I can deliver to fast the customers. So the ability to work where I'm most comfortable and my team is most comfortable means it's easiest for us to ship quality software. So by limiting the number of things I needed to learn at once, uh, my stress level is lower and my ability to deliver is higher. So uh, now we approach the end. Uh, what would I like to see that would make MRuby and MRuby CLI easier to use? For MRuby CLI, I'm working to contribute back the improvements I've made to the build system. 
I've already had some discussions with the authors and the, uh, about the improvements I've made and the benefits they bring, and uh, they seem positive so far. The documentation for MRuby CLI could use some improvement, as it isn't obvious where to start with a new command line tool or what complications you may run into. And I'd also like to make uh, upgrading from one version of Ruby CLI to the other easier. I'm not sure how that should work yet. Uh, the current process involves regenerating part of your project. Uh, for MRuby, uh, ac accurate backtraces would be very helpful. Right now you have to pay extra close attention to figure out which line uh, an exception coming from Ruby, MRuby actually meant. Uh, I also want to separate the loading of the build configuration from generating MRuby's rake tasks. This will make it easier to integrate MRuby's build system with MRuby's CLI's build system. And finally, I'd like to see keyword arguments and methods. MRuby's, CLI, uh, MRuby's C API is a very fa fancy implementation of argument checking for uh, regular arguments, so I'm unsure how this will tie into keyword arguments. Uh, for ZRuby, I'd like to see the MRuby get args function ported uh, from MRuby. This is a function of the C API that extracts method arguments when a Ruby method calls a C function. In MRuby, the method allows you to uh, specify the types of the arguments and automatically type checks and converts the arguments for you. Uh, the equivalent method in CRuby is rbscanArgs, but it is much less expressive since it can only check the number of arguments. Uh, also, for using tests, or writing tests in MRuby, uh, Finding the test preload was difficult, so I'd like to make that automatic, so uh, it'll make the tests easier to write. Also, MRuby test uh, always runs all the tests and doesn't have any options for filtering down to running just one test or a subset of tests. So without this, it's much harder to make large changes to your software since you have to filter your tests by hand every time. Thank you. And do we have any questions from the audience? Any questions regarding, okay, the gentleman you read? This is uh, Tantri Pareto, and I have a question. So you first start using a C Ruby and then you move to M Ruby. Uh, during the process, do, do after I want to use M Ruby, can you uh, back and swallow from C Ruby to M Ruby? Uh, it's difficult like, to move from one to another. So um, there are a few that I think the changes are. So once you become aware of what the differences are between um, MRuby and and CRuby, it's pretty easy to avoid things uh, writing code that's incompatible. So it would be possible to design a, a system that you could run with either. So you could do maybe test some testing in MRuby or and then the majority testing and development in CRuby. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Um, have you been considering using Crystal for the same purpose? Uh, have I considered Crystal? Like, like, like Go and the others, it would be a, more of a language switch for my team. So, um, not so much, just primarily because uh, Investing the time to learn something is, is um, much more expensive, and the maintenance burden becomes higher because we don't know all. Of, we, we have to learn all of the proper idioms along with writing the tool. So that's that's the main reason that I chose MRuby instead of other languages. Well, I think it's it's close to Ruby since it's also like mostly Ruby. Yeah. But yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it, it's it, it was fairly easy to port. So, uh, opt parse over to from CRuby to MRuby. So I think uh, I'd have to go and either learn a new tool or um, do a larger effort to, to implement those same features so that that cost becomes very high. Great. Do you have any more questions? Okay, great. Well, if you have any questions, you can ask Eric afterward. And thanks again for your sharing, Eric. Thank you. Let's give a big uh, round of applause for Eric.